there we go. So yesterday you're supposed to do this and you had to move, oh, here we go. You had to move the rectangles onto the map and some of you kind of just like placed them willy nilly wherever you thought they fit. <laughs> that wasn't quite exactly what you're supposed to do. So I just wanted to let you know that down here are the coordinate points. And so you're supposed to line up the four vertices of the squares or rectangles with those coordinate points. So for example, the cherry point was this color right here. So I needed to find zero two. So here's zero. Remember I go across my X axis first and then up my Y. So find zero and then I go up two. So that's one corner. So I'm just gonna kind of move it there just to mark my spot. And then the next one is zero five. So across zero and up five. And here's my other vertice, or sorry, vertex. And then two, two. So across two and up two. There's the other one. And lastly, two, five. So across two and up five right there. So that's exactly where Cherry Point goes on the map. So just in case you didn't do that, um, you have the opportunity to kind of go back and fix that today. So, moving on. It's Friday, it's Friday. And we still have that essential question that we're working on using coordinate planes for. I see some hands up, um, but I'm just gonna randomly call on somebody to read our essential question right here. This is what we're working on trying to be able to answer after the lessons. So I'm gonna call on, let's see. Um, Emmett, would you mind reading? Sure. Awesome, thank you. Essential question, mm -hmm. coordinates grid used to display awesome. and Okay, that word's very small for me. Hold up. Oh, yeah, it is a small no, no. one. Words? Represent. Mm -hmm. that. Oh, I think he's breaking up, but regardless, I know. Real world. Real world. Excellent. Thank Math. you, Emmett. Emmett, you're a rock star. I love it. Thank you. So today, talking about the real world problems is sometimes in life we have patterns and sometimes they're put on purpose and then other times they just happen naturally. If you were in my class, I'm trying to think if, it, if I talked about it last year. No, I think I talked about it two years ago, but we talked about how we can find math in nature and those patterns happen naturally. Uh, so if you kind of remember that, or maybe you've heard it from another teacher or seen it somewhere, you can just kind of in the back of your head, think about those natural patterns that occur. So today we are going to kind of take those patterns that happen and they're going to be on the coordinate plane and within coordinate pairs. So after this lesson, you're going to be able to see the patterns that are within our city map, actually. So when uh, people create and design the city, they have patterns within them. Um, like stoplights and stop signs and intersections and the blocks that are within a city, all of those have different patterns. So you'll get to kind of like really look at those later today. So that's kind of like our real world um, piece of this. So we're going to start by kind of breaking down one single problem and we're going to, I'm going to show you how like you would break the problem down and identify the patterns to be able to figure out uh, if the pattern continues where it would go, because that's what we're gonna really focus on. So our problem that we're focusing on together today, again, is real world. Uh, it's not gonna be with the drones, because I'm letting you do the drone stuff, because it's super fun. Um, and we are going to be learning about a botanist who is studying plants, or plant growth, and pollution. So, in the chat, I'm gonna ask you to do a couple of things in the chat this morning. So make sure you're just being diligent about what you put in the chat. Um, what is a botanist? You can either know this 
you can think this, or maybe you can use clues from what's on my screen to help you figure out maybe what a botanist is. So in the chat, you can send it to me privately, and I'm going to sift through and kind of call out some of the things I'm seeing. What is a botanist? I see a scientist. Absolutely. They are a scientist. Oh, I'm getting someone who studies plants, somebody who does testing of plants, or a scientist of plants, a person who takes care of plants. Yeah, totally. Awesome, guys. So you are Definitely along the right track. It is a person. This person is does a lot of work in the scientific field or the science field. Shout out to Mr. Hernandez. Um, and it has to do with plants and they do take care of them and they study plants. So that's kind of like the basic. Oh, look at Mr. Hernandez with her plant over there. Um, so I just kind of wanted to, oh, and Reagan's already taken it to the next level. Awesome, Reagan. And Alicia's taking it there too. So the next part is they're already reading the problem. Reagan, since you're already there, would you read that first sentence of the problem, please? Every week. Every two weeks, she records data in sets of ordered pairs. Yeah, and would you read the sentence right before that, too, please? A botanist was studying the impact of pollution on plant growth. Ooh, thank you. Okay, so let's take what we just figured out about a botanist, what they do, who they are, and then I want you to take your background of pollution, and I want you to put them together. So plant growth and pollution. What do you think is gonna be happen happening with plant growth and pollution in the chat? You can also raise your blue hand if it feels like a lot to, to type because that probably would be a long one. Thanks, Reagan. You're killing it this morning. So when you hear plant growth and pollution, things that go together, what comes to your brain? We're activating that background knowledge. So Ocean says that plant leaves filter the air. They help with pollution. Absolutely. Thank you. Great. Reagan said that the plants might die from the pollution. I could totally see that too. Alicia thinks that someone is trying to maybe help stop pollution using those plants, probably because of what Ocean was saying. They help with pollution. Definitely. I know some of you are probably still typing in that chat, so thank you for that. Um, you can keep typing. I'm going to kind of move us on to the next part of it. So they're studying the impact of pollution on plant growth. With your heads, do you think these plants are going to grow more with pollution or no? Are the plants going to grow more with pollution? Yes or no? Shake your heads, shake your heads. Oh, oh my goodness. I'm seeing a lot of this. I'm seeing a lot of hair flying everywhere. <laughs> That's awesome. Yes, I, I'm thinking probably not either. I know pollution is kind of a bad thing and plants don't like it necessarily. They want a good healthy environment to grow well. Oh, and I got all these responses in the chat. Thank you. Okay, so this botanist was recording data like what Ms. Hernandez has been talking to you about, uh, kind of how you've been recording temperatures over time. Um, so they were recording data over time with these plants. And so the X coordinate is the number of weeks at the time she like wrote down the data. So the X coordinate, the first one is going to be the week number. So looking at these coordinates right here, 
these are our coordinates. The x one is, x is always first, right? X is first. So looking at the x coordinate, can you tell me what the weak number is for this ordered pair right here? Can you raise your hand or put it in the chat? Thanks, Kaylee. I'll rephrase that because it might have sounded a little confusing. So I just highlighted a coordinate pair on the screen. And they said that the X coordinate is the weak number. So can you tell me, you can hold it up with your fingers, you can put it in the chat. What number weak is she on with this first ordered pair right there, a coordinate pair? Thanks, Lauren. Man, Reagan, you are on it this morning. Alicia, yes, okay, you got it. Ansley, Landon, Kaylee, sweet. I'm looking for some of my friends that are maybe a little bit more quiet who are showing me those numbers with their fingers. Yes. Awesome. Samantha, would you want to take yourself off of mute and tell us how many weeks we're at? I saw you holding those fingers up. Two weeks. Yes, ma'am. Awesome. It's two weeks. So we know that when we're looking at that coordinate point, or sorry, coordinate. Um, X is the first one, so two would be the first one. We're at two weeks. All right, I know I'm taking a long time. I just want to really dive into this problem because it's super, it's super important to do that. So she takes it every two weeks. Huh. Let's look at all of those X coordinates in there. If she does it every two weeks, what pattern are we going to notice? And I want us to raise our hands for this one. What pattern are you going to notice? If she does it every two weeks, and our weeks are our x coordinates. I got lots of hands raised. Guys, only raise your hand once, please. Only raise your hand once, because it makes it hard for me to be able to see everyone. I'm scrolling through. All right, Landon, go ahead, talk to me. What do you think and what pattern? B, two, four, six, eight, ten. So it'd be counting by the two. Yes, I love it. And Ansley put that in the chat too. Thank you, Ansley. Great job. So we are going up by twos, just like Landon was saying. Here's our two. Here's our four. Here's our six, eight, ten. Amazing. Y'all already finding patterns. So now we're going to look at the y coordinate. So it says the y coordinate gives us the height of the plant in inches. So in the chat, what is the height of the plant at week four? So find week four and tell me what is the height. You can show me with your fingers or you can put it in the chat. Thanks, Fumi. Thanks, Elliot and Lauren and Reagan. We're gonna find week four and then the height in inches. Thanks, Landon and Ansley. Ocean. Kaylee. Yep, Lily D, you got it, girlfriend. Thanks, Genesis, for putting in those coordinates. That's awesome. Mackenzie and Nellie. Great. All right, Lily D, would you mind taking yourself off of mute and telling the class? So at week four, how many inches tall was that plant? Twenty-two. Girl, what did you put in the chat? You're getting ahead. I'm trying to find your square. I can't see you. I want to see that pretty face while I'm talking to you. Lily, are you getting shy on me now? <laughs> That's okay. I understand. I won't call you out anymore. All right. Uh, Mackenzie, would you like to take yourself off of mute? How tall is that plant going to be? Mm. 
we have a lot of shy friends this morning? Okay, that's totally fine. All right, Nellie, I, I know. Answer now. No. Oh, Mackenzie, you're ready to answer now? Is that what you said? I couldn't hear who was talking. Uh, I said 10. Oh, thank you. I couldn't hear you. Awesome. Yes. Mackenzie said 10 inches because at week four right here, the X, the Y was 10. So 10 inches at week four. Thank you. Great job. So she recorded the following coordinates for a plant exposed to pollution. So we're going to see probably maybe that plant either stops growing or it, I just don't think it's going to grow well with pollution. Y'all told me that. And so, and now what we're going to try to do is it says if the pattern continues, so there is a pattern, at which week should the botanist expect no change in the plant height? All right. So I want you to think about this. The plant height is the Y coordinate, which is right here, 4, 10, 15, 19, 22. Can you figure out the pattern? I want you to lower your hands unless you have figured out that pattern for the Y coordinate for the height of the plant. What is the pattern there? Okay, I'm getting some explanations in the chat. I'm gonna give some people a little bit more time to kind of think about it and see if they can find that pattern with the Y coordinate. Going from four to 10, what happened? From 10 to 15, what happened? From 15 to 19, what happened? All right, Kaylee, will you please kind of talk us through what pattern you noticed? The pattern that I noticed was that if it's four inches on week two and it was 10 inches on week four, it went up by six inches. Mm -hmm. And then it was four inches on if it was 10 inches on week four and 15 inches on week six, it only went up five inches. Mm -hmm. So the amount of inches it is going up is going down by one. Mm, so you're saying the difference between the this week and this week is six inches, the difference between this week and this week is five, and the difference between this week and this week is four inches, and then from this week to this week is three inches. So you think it's going to keep going down, decreasing by one inch at a time. And I saw some other friends put that in the chat. Excellent. All right. Yes, it is decreasing. It's going down. It was counting down, Jamie said, by like five, four, three, two. So now that we know the pattern for X, which is counting by twos, and now that we know the pattern for Y, which is going down by one inch each time, we should be able to figure out the next couple of coordinates that the botanist is going to record. So I'm going to stop sharing this, and I'm going to put up my whiteboard, and we're going to kind of talk through how to come up with the next couple of coordinates. All right, so I gotta make sure I have it written for you. So the first one is two, again, my, I'm having to do it on my laptop because my iPad's not working for, so you're just gonna have to bear with my terrible computer <laughs> handwriting. I think you can read it though. I know it's awful. And you could probably compare it to a first grader, maybe. I, that might be an insult to first graders, I'm not sure. And that's a four, not a nine. Six and then 15. Woo! Thanks for bearing with me, guys. And eight, 19. And then our last coordinate pair that we have from the botanist recorded is at week 10, it was 20 
two inches. So up here, I'm gonna say W for weeks. And then, and I kind of stacked them instead of, ooh, that is the worst line I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> so W for weeks, all of these are our weeks for the X coordinate. So X is our weeks. And then our Y over here, because remember X first, then Y, is going to be our inches. So I'm gonna put I in. So let's keep doing our pattern. We already know this far. I'm gonna call on a friend to help me do the next couple of X coordinates. So starting right here, we have two, four, six, eight, ten, and then who do I have? I can't see who's raising hands. Um, Sergio, what would be the next X? So we have two, four, six, eight, ten. What comes next? Twelve. Yes, sir. Twelve. And then what would come after that? Give me another one. Fourteen. Yes, sir. Awesome, thank you, Sergio. All right, now let's look over here at my Y. Remember, this is going up, but the difference between them is going down each time. So the difference right here was six, the difference was five. And remember, when we say difference, we're talking about subtraction because some of us forgot that over the summer. Four, and then the difference between these two would be three. So the difference from 22 to the next number should be two. So 22 minus two, I mean not minus two, uh, plus two right there would be how much? What's gonna be our next one, Cami? 24. 24. And then the difference, we should go right there, should be one, because we're counting down, remember? So what's one more than 24? I'm gonna call on a friend, Cullen. What should be that last Y coordinate right here? Twenty-five. Yes, sir, 25. And then I'm gonna add in, we're gonna go 12, 14, 16 would be our last week and then is it gonna grow any right here for this next one shake your head yes or no is it gonna grow thank you Emmett Emmett shaking his head no Jamon's giving me that thumbs down it's not gonna grow because we know this is the pattern six five four three two one well, the next one's obviously zero. So if it only grows zero inches, it didn't grow at all. So it's still at 25 inches this week. Pollution has stunted its growth. Bummer. I hate when that happens. So I'm going to stop sharing um, that. So the question was, I'm sorry, I'm having to go between screens. The question was, if the pattern continues, at which week should the botanists expect no change in plant height? So what week was that, guys? In the chat, put it real quick so I can tell you your directions. What week was that? Thanks, Ocean. Take yourself off of mute. Go ahead. What week was it at? Me? Mm-hmm. Um, the week was week 16. It was week 16. I wonder if it'll let me share that same whiteboard or if it got rid of everything. Yep, so right here, guys, you can see I'm going to circle it where it was no growth, which was zero, it was at week 16 because our X right there is 16. Thank you. Awesome job, guys. So now it's your turn and you get to do it with fun drone stuff. Um, it will, it's actually going to be more like your maps. Um, so I'm just going to quickly show you what your assignment for today looks like and I will let you go. So your assignment for today kind of looks like this. So here's our coordinate grid and it's going to be our map of Havelock. 
And you can see kind of over here, oops, stop it, stop. Ah. <laughs> you can see the stoplights over here that you're gonna drag and drop onto the coordinates grid and you have your X and Y coordinates here. You have your coordinate pairs there listed for the stoplights. And so stoplights are placed in a pattern throughout the city. The city is expanding and the mayor wants to know where the next stoplights will go. So look at the patterns to determine where the next stoplights will go. Remember, this is important for drones. Drones fly through the sky, stoplights hang in the sky. So the drones need to know where these things are and where they're going to be. So you need to figure out by placing the stoplights on the coordinate grid following these points and you need to figure out where stoplight number five and stoplight number six go and place them on the coordinate grid and type the coordinates here. Your coordinates should look like this, the parenthesis, the number for the X coordinate, a comma, the Y coordinate, and then close parentheses. And then you're gonna do the same thing on the next one with stop signs. All right, and again, you're just taking screenshots, so you need to make sure you take a screenshot of your stoplights and a screenshot of your stop signs and upload them. The directions are on your slide and in the assignment. Whew, all right. I